All eyes on the Mexican national team on their run to the People World Cup in Russia, faced with intense scrutiny from their supporters and the press to face the nightmares of World Cup's past. They are like, I think like gods. The people think on the players as savers of the country. They understand in the Mexico national team and they live with that. And it's the way it is. We are deserving to have a, a great tournament. We know each other for a long, long time. The team needs to have a really important tournament and enjoy a big moment for the country because for every, any Mexican, football is more than a sport. It is Mexico. <laughs> no hay gringos aquí. No hay americanos cuando juega Mexico aquí. <laughs> if you go by numbers, yes, Mexico is America's team. If you put Mexico in a stadium, it will outdraw any other team, club or international, that there is in the United States. It's not enough saying we need to be in good shape. No. We need to be in the best shape of our lives. Lo más importante es que nos dejemos el alma en el campo, llevar la camiseta, sangre, de todo para para que bueno llevar el nombre de México en el camino y siempre Osorio nos cambió la mentalidad y vamos con la mentalidad de ser campeón. With a trio of Mexican stars and my former manager representing MLS's best chance at World Cup glory, I didn't have to go far to find sellout crowds on Mexico's send-off tour across the U.S. Over the last 10 years, Mexico has actually played more than four times more friendlies in the U.S. than Mexico itself. So I've come here to Los Angeles to explore a dynamic unlike anywhere in world football and discover for sure maybe what's always been true. America's team might just be El Tri. Ahora y aquí. have like Vela, Diego Rossi, a 19, 20 year old. If you get to guys that they're young at the prime, the league will get better. And this is what we want. I mean, we live here. This is what we want to make it better. You know, because I want to go to games to where I can see great teams and nobody is looking down upon because they play for a Galaxy or, or LAFC or any other team. The fact that it's a rivalry and have Mexicans in their prime, like the, both those Santos brothers, even though they play for Galaxy, not LAFC, you know, it's still good. Saben que un túnel pasado, son como mis hermanos Gio y Jonah, pero, pero cuando empieza el partido ¡Guerra! hay que ganar a quien sea. After getting injured in MLS Cup 2012 against the Galaxy here at StubHub Center, I started doing media work and Sebastian Salazar was the first to reach out to me when he was in Houston with CSN there to give me an opportunity to do pre and post game live. So now that I'm doing it full time, I had to hit up an old friend and meet up at the Subhub Center again, this time for the first ever El Trafico. Let's be honest about why Velas paid what he is and why he's here, because he's Mexican. He's a huge draw and he delivered. Maybe there are other players better than him, but is there a player better than him for LAFC? No, it's per it's literally perfect. It's almost like there should be designated players and Mexican designated players because there's such a value um, to, for that DP with this fan base. If we're being honest about who watches soccer in this country, look at ratings. Mexican Americans watch soccer in this country overwhelmingly, more so than almost everybody else combined. And whether it's on in, on in Spanish or on in English. If you want to cover an MLS game and you can't talk to the people on the field that speak Spanish, can you really cover it? Like, I think that's a really big question that everybody needs to be asking themselves. If you're only telling the stories of MLS through English-speaking players, are you really catching the full 360? Carlos Vela deals with this back and forth in the media and the press every day in English and in Spanish. I caught up with Carlos at LAFC's new training ground and, although imperfect, did my best to try to speak Spanish. Okay, estoy aprendiendo español, Carlos. Ah, muy bien. Un poco de español, un poco de inglés. Spanglish. 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 Uh, jugué con Cuauhtémoc. ¿Ah, sí? Ah, ok. Sí. Entonces me enseñan. Personaje, eh. Oh, qué grande. Pero <risa> las palabras que me enseñan... Son malas. No podemos decir en la cámara, no, es verdad. Siempre. Siempre. ¿Cómo encontrás uh, Los Angeles ahora? Or how are you finding Los Angeles so far? Um, Español, inglés. 
cualquier. Muy bien, creo que estoy disfrutando mucho, no solo del fútbol, sino también de la ciudad. Creo que para mí y para mi familia es muy importante y hemos encontrado un lugar donde somos felices y, y luego eso hace que en el campo pueda eh, disfrutar más y pueda demostrar todo lo que, lo que puedo hacer. El apoyo de Los Ángeles y uh, el Galaxy, hay muchos mexicanos, ¿no? Muchísimo, muchísimo. Como te digo, me siento como en casa, o sea, me siento como en casa y creo que, no sé si tres millones de mexicanos aquí en Los Ángeles es demasiado, o sea, hay más mexicanos que en muchas ciudades de, de, de México y, y desde el primer día que llegué me sentí muy arropado y, y bueno, feliz porque al fin y al cabo también extrañaba mis, mis raíces, que, que bueno, estuve mucho tiempo viviendo viendo fuera en Europa, que, que al final no es la misma cultura, es muy diferente el tipo de gente y, y bueno, estoy, estoy más, que, más que feliz de estar aquí. Y sí, ojalá, ojalá que muchos jugadores mexicanos se vengan. Ya, yo cuando me vine, ya te digo yo que muchos jugadores se querían venir a, a la liga, pero bueno, al final no, no, no podían por contratos, pero bueno, eh, ojalá, ojalá y Dios quiera, pues si se vengan, porque así van a hacer que, que la liga crezca más. Esos eran los amigos de Cuau. <risa> ¡Pavel! A two-time World Cup legend for El Tri, Jorge Campos helped start MLS right here for the Galaxy in 96. Never one to shy away from the flash and style of his neon goalkeeper kits. Rumor has it after seeing 80,000 fill up the Rose Bowl for his first game, the next day he got MLS to buy him a Ferrari. Like I said, dude's a legend. Mis amigos, Luis Hernández, Claudio Suárez, Borghetti, eh, Osvaldo Sánchez, Pavel Pardo y Claudio Suárez. Jugué con ellos. Bueno, creo que jugaron conmigo también. <risa> LA Galaxy. Galaxy. Era un proyecto muy grande. Me explicó el proyecto que había para la MS, lo importante que era para, para el proyecto, para Estados Unidos, para el fútbol de Estados Unidos. Deci, decidí venir, ser parte del inicio de la MLS y creo yo que no me equivoqué. What would you say to the haters that maybe say, you know, uh, MLS isn't the right place for Mexican national team players or isn't the right place to prepare you for uh, a tournament like the World Cup? Well, I think the, the important thing is the mentality for how you come here. Because, of course, I can come to LA and enjoy the city and enjoy the life and don't play, you know. It's, I can do it, but I come here to be an important player. I'm working really hard to show every week I'm good and I try to be the best player in the league. Fuera del campo se puede hablar muchísimo, ¿no? La prensa puede decir eh, muchas cosas de que no es una liga competitiva, que no tiene calidad, que muchas cosas. Pero yo te puedo decir que estoy dentro del campo y te puedo decir que es muy difícil. O sea, el, 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 hoy en día el fútbol está más preparado físicamente, tácticamente, técnicamente. Te puedo decir que la liga es muy, muy, muy competitiva. Carlos Vela, who's going to be the star maybe for Mexico and Russia, is playing in MLS. Not only people on this side of the border, dude, people on the other side of the border have to pay attention. And that's great because it further links not just the players and the leagues and the teams, but the countries. Like now, I'm talking with Mexican colleagues at ESPN Deportes on Twitter, on email, on TV shows about our league. Probably 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when the MLS was created, then 10 years ago, probably in Mexico we see this league as a retirement league, no? The players that came here uh, in those years came here for the final years of their own careers. But now that's changing. Nationalism sells. It sells everywhere. It sells in this country. It certainly is going to sell in Mexico. Um, there's an attitude from many in the Mexican press that is MLS is beneath us. Soccer is ours. Everything else can be theirs, but soccer is ours. I think that the players like Giovanni Dos Santos, Jonathan Dos Santos, Carlos Vela are looking at those points and of course that LA is very close to Mexico to think that in their mid 20s or 28, 29 years they can come to this league and not just make money but play at a good level. Some people have taken your comments to say that MLS isn't the right league for these players or that the right league for Mexican national team players. Do you think that's a fair... I Well, and, and thank you for asking me because I think I, I was misquoted.
Juan Carlos Osorio, El Profe, played for him with the Chicago Fire, and we've stayed in touch over the years. Got to go see him firsthand at AT AT&T Stadium in Dallas and see it from a different perspective just by the bench. With all the obligations of the press and the pressure leading to Russia, he was able to take a little bit of time out to sit down with me for coffee in Los Angeles. I have no qualms. I have no questions that Giovanni, Jonathan, and Carlos will be hopefully in good form at the moment when we have to make the final decision. There's a saying in Mexico that the, the Mexican people demand more of the national team coach than the president. And it's probably true. It's really probably true. And in Mexico, there's a lot of pride about Mexican soccer and Mexican coaches and the Mexican league. First of all, he's Colombian, not Mexican, no? So whenever you know that it's uh, for Igner and he's in charge of the most popular team, more than Chivas, more than America, the Mexico national team represents everyone, no? Then you can understand that it's tough to be uh, a foreigner. When uh, Osorio plays, you never know who is going to play. And the people doesn't know really how is the style of the Mexican team. I saw him deal with a Mexican star. Yeah, with Paul. The, the biggest of them all, Cuauhtémoc, day to day. And I could tell his personality at the time was such that he could command his respect. And Temo's a guy that he told me that once that he's from the neighborhood where if your car gets stolen yeah. or your radio gets stolen, you go there to like buy you back. Gotta go to his hood to get it back. Zona Rosa, Tepito, yeah. Muchas veces no creíamos en, en, en nosotros mismos. Y yo creo que él cambió mucho esa, esa mentalidad, ¿no? De, de ser ganador, de creer en nosotros mismos. Y, y eso yo creo es lo que nos va a llevar eh, lejos en, en el mundial. If this group is able to have success in Russia, how will they get it done? And what is success for Mexico in Russia? <laughs> you probably have heard quinto partido, the fifth match. The quinto partido, the fifth game is this thing that's like hung over Mexican soccer for so long. Quinto partido for Mexicans means to reach the quarterfinals in a World Cup. In the past six World Cups, Mexico has reached the round of 16, but they were well always eliminated and 2002 was very painful for the Mexicans against the US. Since 94, Germany, Brazil, Mexico, the only teams that have gone every year to the World Cup and gotten out of the group phase every year. Germany and Brazil have hardware to show for it. Mexico has nothing. Mexico does not have one quarterfinal appearance. And every single year it's something different, but it's always something devastating. The person who remedies that, the person that solves that, that fixes that for a nation, oh my God. He will either never be let into Mexico again, or he will be the, the, the patron foreign saint of Mexican soccer, San Juan Carlos, San Osorio. How do you think you will feel at that first match oh. when the national anthem I have asked myself many times the same question. At that moment, I will feel we have done everything. Let's see what the game brings today. I remember playing with Quao in oh, Chicago. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> but I remember going through even just an airport, and Mexican people who were either traveling or working there would drop everything, quit their job, just like, leave their post yep. or whatever they're doing, family. Cars abandoned on the street. <laughs> just going. To Baby go. just like in a <laughs> stroller. To take a photo. And I'd, I'd never seen anything like uh, the sort of love and admiration and obsession for him. Where does that passion come from and how, how does that make sense? I don't know if you fully appreciate the national team like you do when you're a fan of your, your country in another country. And this is the great thing about Mexico playing here, and this is why it draws such crowds here. You're given a chance to be back with your people, and you jones for that. You need that when, when you're away, you know? I, I wish people understood, like, the immigrant experience more. Dude, it's hard, man. My mom left everything back home, everything she knew, to come here to, like, see what she could make of herself. And if you've never left everything you know, you just can't possibly appreciate what immigrants in this country go through, Mexican-American or not, and how much a Thai home means. And soccer is that. So yeah, Cuauhtémoc is a deity. And he represented that shirt that made me feel close to something that I'm 
somehow still far away from. So I see that guy walking through an airport. Yeah, I'm gonna hop out of my car and try and get a picture. It, it means that much to me. They always support us in a bad moment too. They are always there trying to help in us. And maybe sometimes they are not in a good moment in their life, but when it's Mexico and when it's a game, they forget everything and it's just for for our teams. El apoyo que nos da México aquí es increíble, es fundamental. Ellos disfrutan el partido, nosotros disfrutamos de todo. Es México, dices tú, es siempre que vengo es México, es, es la verdad, es es México. Cuando juega México contra quien juegue, creo que nos sentimos en casa y eso es muy importante para para todos los jugadores. Es 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 muy bonito. Cuando juega el tri aquí es contra los Estados Unidos. Es... Hay más mexicano que estadounidense. Sí. Es, un es increíble. Para, para... Sí, es que para nosotros el fútbol es una religión, ¿no? Aquí en Estados Unidos el fútbol todavía está creciendo muchísimo. Ya creo que es el segundo deporte con más audiencia en televisión. Pero para nosotros el fútbol es una religión y como te digo, los mexicanos, hay muchos mexicanos en Estados Unidos, o sea que a la ciudad que vayamos, sea en Dallas, Houston, sea en Los Ángeles, sea en donde sea, Nueva York, hay muchísimo mexicano y todo el estadio se llena de mexicanos, ¿no? Y siempre que comemos contra Estados Unidos, la mayor parte del, del estadio es, es mexicana. Así que para nosotros, como tú dices, ¿no? Es, es una ventaja, es una ventaja. The rivalry there. We compete to be better than the U.S. in football, in soccer, and when we when we play against them, we try to beat them. After that, there is plenty, enough respect from the players to the players, from the players to the Americans, and from the players to the U.S. as a country. I think you see a real opportunity here for soccer to be this kind of through rivalry almost, because that's what it is, right? It's that great U.S.-Mexico rivalry, but through the rivalry be this unifying force. Uh, at a time of like real division, I think it's amazing. I think it's a really cool moment in time and that L.A. specifically and MLS has been able to create these contrasting forces within a bigger picture of contrasting forces. Again, we find ourselves in a place where like, hey, soccer is in a, in a position to tear down some walls. With the unifying bid to host World Cup 2026 formed between Canada, the U.S., and Mexico set to be decided this summer, Los Angeles in some ways is a perfect testing ground. From MLS, the U.S., and bigger than them all, El Tri. To me, the best part of being here in L.A. and the U.S. is that home team can mean more than one thing.